Hello and welcome to the reading from Agastya, Purpose of Life, from the Discourses of Agastya Vanipadu. Today's topic is progress. Sister Sumati Venkatraman will read. Thank you. Om Agasteshwaraya Namaha, Om Agasteshwaraya Namaha, Om Agasteshwaraya Namaha. Progress. Gajarat Swamigal asks, Why is it that man has not progressed in spirituality despite going on pilgrimages, visiting Swamiji's and temples? Why do people still suffer from physical and mental illness? So Sage Agastya says, Whether it is the man of today or the man of the ancient times, the soul within him has always struggled to know who it is. The soul which is a minute personification of Paramatma has divine characteristics. The soul knows the inner truth. It is constantly in the blissful state beyond the suffering and joy, beyond love and hatred and beyond light. None of the sins or good we do ever adhere to the soul. The good and bad we do, our karmas only attach themselves to the different bodies we have and are shrinking through them. So here, the actions, yeah. let us examine what Appa is talking about. First of all, this is a very pertinent question. We see all around us, a lot of people, you know, doing a lot of things almost in a, on a daily basis. They go to ashrams, they go to temples, they go on pilgrimages. They do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, charity work in, in the name of God. But they still come back and go through the same physical and mental issues that they have. They suffer in life. They still haven't found that satisfaction or that state of being completely uh, calm and peaceful. So Gajar Swami is asking Sai Jagastya, why father, why after all these things, why, why are people still suffering? Why are they still having diseases? Why are they still mentally uh, uh, upset? And, you know, life is a burden for many of them, you know, the, for the few uh, hours of days that they are out there doing something in, in terms of the divine, they're very happy. Then they come back, they go back to the same old thing over and over again. So Appa says, whether it is the man of today or the man of the ancient times, the soul within him has always struggled to know who it is. So that is one of the major or the first reasons why man cannot be completely satisfied. Because the soul knows who it is. It is, uh, you know, it is part of the absolute. But man does not understand the soul that is within him. And so as, as long as the soul is not able to you know, connect to its divine self and know itself in the presence of man, there's always dissatisfaction. That is why even the greatest of the people, the greatest of the scientists or you know, uh, philosophers, they, they're still not completely at ease, at a state of being where they have no more suffering in terms of the physical world. That's because the soul has not yet connected or realized its true self in that particular created human ego. So Appa says the soul is the a minute personification of the Paramatman and has the divine characteristics that the Paramatman has. So that we already know. The absolute is the thing that is the reason all of us are here. We are all created as particles of that absolute. So like the drop of the ocean that is in the ocean has all the characteristics of the ocean. We all have the same characteristics as the absolute. However, because we have not realized our true self, we are still going through the maya or the illusion of the created world. Then Appa says, the soul knows the inner truth. The soul itself is already in a constant state of bliss because it is the part of the absolute. However, man 
as he is covered by the five different bodies, and I'll talk about it in a moment, still not realized his true self. He's still not connected with his own understanding of his soul as the part of absolute. So he continues to suffer joy, uh, experiences joy uh, or suffering, which are both a uh, part of the created world. So the soul is constantly in the blissful state and it is beyond suffering and joy, beyond love and hatred and beyond light and darkness. So what is Appa is saying here is the soul itself is in a state of constant bliss. It, it is not affected by the illusions of duality, which could be anything from suffering, joy, love, hate. All these are part of the created world and do not represent the soul, which is beyond duality. So none of the sins or the good we do ever adhere to the soul. So he says, no matter what we do as a human being, as a created ego, nothing that we do is going to touch the soul because the soul is pure. It is a state of higher consciousness, which means, you know, we, we have different levels of consciousness. That is the purest, highest state of consciousness. So whatever we do in terms of our actions, our thoughts, it is all connected with the lower consciousnesses, lower vibrations. So that is why the soul remains untouched. It's always pure, except it's like a diamond in the, in the rough. It's, it's hidden under the, the heaps of coal. And as you, you know, cleanse it and as you uh, remove all the dirty vibrations and connect to the higher vibrations, then you reach that point where you connect with the soul. But that is the whole purpose of life, to understand what we are. Then he says, the good and bad we do, our karma only attaches to the different bodies we have and are shrinking through them. So what does he mean? So in Hinduism, we have five koshas or five sheets. We call it the Annamaya Kosha, Pradamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha and Anandamaya Kosha. So An Annamaya Kosha is the gross body. The, that's what they call in English, the gross body. And then you have the Pranamaya Kosha, which is the energy body, which is consisting of all the, uh, you know, vibrations and stuff around us. Manomaya Kosha is the mental and emotional body, which means that is the vibration, at the third level of vibration where, you know, it is more connected with the, not, not the physical things like what we can see and touch, but beyond that. Then the Vijnanamaya Kosha, which is consciousness itself. So the first three levels of these bodies are affected by what we do, and I'll explain why. But consciousness, that is Vijnana Maya Kosha, is the, is the layer of wisdom which it comes to a stage where it is beginning to uh, you know, separate from these three lower levels. And then the final level is the Ananda Maya Kosha, which is the bliss body, which is of the highest vibration. So none of the things that we do in the lower levels ever touch that final part of the body or the human body. Because if you think of it, the human person, the ego, the body, everything is the soul. It is not some light thing which is inside us. It, the whole thing compromises the soul. It just has the different sheets. But once these sheets are removed or a person goes beyond these levels, then they connect to the highest point. So he says, what we do, what we see, what we think of as good or bad affects only our gross body. So, you know, you, if you, you know, if you read this further, he'll explain how exactly it, it connects you and how it, how all the things that you do or see or think affect your body. So let us go forward, Sister Sumati. Yeah. So the good and bad we do, our karmas only attach themselves to the different bodies we have and are shrinking through them. The actions of the senses or what we perceive, good or bad, only affect the stula sharira or the gross body. It has the ability to give health or disease to the different parts of the body, which means if a person eats good food as necessary when needed, 
then it gives strength and health to the body. If a person eats without limit, then it causes indig indigestion and stomach upset. That's a very simple example and it's such an example that we can easily, easily understand. If we take up the idea of food, how many of us stop eating once we feel full? We don't. If the food is tasty, then we cannot control ourselves. We eat a lot more and then what happens? We have stomach upset or we feel bloated or, you know, it affects the body. So at a very, very simple level, anything in excess, we can understand anything in excess affects the body. Yes, in order to live until we realize our true selves, and that I'm saying that deliberately, until we realize our true self, where we understand that we do not have to depend on the physical things around us like food and water to survive. And very few Atmas are able to do that in this physical world. We still need to eat, we still need to drink, uh, you know, to survive, to uh, we need liquid to replenish our body. But these, this, in this very thing that we do to survive, we make our mistakes. Most of the problems with the body is associated with what we do to our own body, how we treat our own body. So Appa always says, have a kind of a regulation on what you do and how you eat, how you enjoy the things of the senses. He has said in many of the uh, Valipadu discourses, it is okay to uh, you know, experience what is needed to be experienced at that particular stage of life. So at a, uh, uh, in, when you're in the Bala, you, uh, Bala, Balia or the, the time of childhood, yes, play, enjoy, experience the joy of being innocent. And in youth, you experience the joy of exploration. In Grihastha Ashrama, you experience the joy of marital life and the suffering connected with that. But how many of us have discarded all this? We come to the, you know, the Vanaprastash, which is very a beautiful thing that our scriptures have said, you know, different levels of human uh, existence. Uh, once you assume a human body, you start with childhood, then you youth, then you have the, the uh, adult life, which is connected with family marriage. And then in the scriptures talk about Vanaprastha, which is we grow old. So then what happens when you grow old? How many of us let go of the other three things? We don't. That is the problem because we continuously want to experience everything else that we have experienced in the first three levels of our existence. So you will find a lot of people who are older in, in, you know, in the geriatric period still wanting to enjoy things that are more suitable for the youth or a child. They still want to eat excessively. They want to consume ice cream. They want to, you know, and it affects the body because the body is also aging. Or they want to indulge in sex, uh, essential things. Why, why the need? The body no longer responds to such things, you know, in many, many people as they grow older, but they still want to go enjoy those things because they have not understood that it is good to age gracefully and they have not understood the purpose of life, which is beyond all these experiences that we undergo in the four stages of life. So the idea is when we are in, in, you know, at a stage maybe after 50, 55, it's time to start letting go. Time to start minimizing what we have around us. How many people are still having deaths? At 50, at 60, how many people are still building homes or buying to cars and getting into debts at older ages? How many people are still going out and decorating their houses at, 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 when they are still 70 years old? What happens when we do all these things? When we do all these things, we are unnecessarily complicating our life. Our mind is focused on our home, our material things and uh, what is happening around us instead of us disassociating ourselves from all these things, getting prepared to leave this body. And how beautiful is that soul which understands the purpose of life and at least at this stage of life begins to connect with the divine 
so that they can end the cycle of birth and death that we are constantly in and the end the cycle of suffering that we go through because suffering and joy are two sides of, sides of the same coin if you are born and if you want to enjoy then you are going to suffer so how many of us start seeking the divine and you know make, making our life a little less complicated so we can focus more with the, about the the soul that is within ourselves so uh, we'll continue with what uh, sorry i uh, digress but let's continue with what appa is talking about go ahead sister samati yeah thank you in the same way headache and body aches are the result of misuse of the sense organs and organs of action when we perceive through our sense organs our intellect gives us two types of experiences one is happiness and the other is sorrow the senses in search of the irresistible magnetic force of those things that give it pleasure look for such things often hence the happiness and sorrow that ensues affects only the intellect and mind of a human but does not touch the pure soul hence the soul never becomes corrupt all that becomes corrupt is the mind and body that surrounds it so this is again very very important now appa is now talking about the next level he says headache body ache what are what are all these things that happen you know we all complain about it we are all experience it he says it is the result of misuse of the sense organs it's such a such a easy thing to remember somebody uses their hands for example i do a lot you know at work for typing then i come back home and i am on the on the uh, phone uh, talking to people and it's constant use of the the hand and the eyes and so what is getting affected my eyes are getting affected my hands are getting affected somebody else you know uh, watches tv a lot all day long that's all they do they listen to music they uh, watch watch tv then what happens they start getting headache they listen to loud music that you know that that causes headache so what appa says is what we perceive and what we uh, experience through our senses and the misuse of that where we do not limit ourselves where we do not understand when to stop causes the pains and the aches and the diseases in a body so all diseases do not come just out of nowhere it comes because of our own doing because we allow a body to be exposed to certain things we allow a body to do things that it is not supposed to do we do things excessively so appa saying all this is happening because of our body of how our mind tells our body to behave and and because of our sense organs so when we look at something it either gives us pleasure or pain or you know it's something ugly which is very gross you know we are like oh we are saying oh that's not nice then we look at something beautiful we say oh it's beautiful but all these things are still within the realm of duality the, within the realm of the created world so all of these things will continuously bring us happiness and sorrow agnani is one who is beyond this duality who has understood what he is what the soul is is connected with the soul who has realized the soul and lives the life goes through everything but remains untouched by it like a lotus in a pond it's in a dirty pond but that does not affect the beauty of the lotus that is the beauty of the soul that is within us and he says the senses in search of the irresistible magnetic force of those things that give it pleasure look for such things often and that is what i was just talking about just now we are constantly looking for that which gives us pleasure but we fail to understand that when we seek this pleasure and we seek the pleasure when it is not really the time for us to seek it say for example we are old and we are still seeking the pleasures of the youth we are only creating more unhappiness and sorrow for ourselves we are punishing our own body by trying to do things that it was not supposed to do at a certain age so when we go into the stage of grihastha ashrama which is 55 years and older let us start making our habits cleaner 
Let us understand the purpose of life. Let us connect to the divine. Let us take care of what we see, what we think, what we do. Because what we see affects how we think. The sense organs, the, one of the first things that is most powerful in the physical world is the eyes. You, you just watch yourself. You look at something. Immediately, it starts a thought process. And before you know it, the thought has already reached so many different levels. And that is why we have what you call advertising. You know, you look at food, you want to eat because the eyes are the most powerful magnetic things in the created world. So if we control what we see, at least in the beginning levels, then we control how it affects us. Later, when you become a gnani, then you can see anything and it affects you in no way. You know, it, you remain untouched. So a yagnani might see something which is uh, bad. He doesn't see it as bad. He knows that's the purpose of that particular thing. It's just happening. It's just the way it is. It does not affect him. But we personal, personalize everything we see, think, and hear because we are still connected with the ego, which is the biggest tool Divine Mother uses to keep us in this created world. Hence, he says, the happiness and sorrow that ensues affects only the intellect and mind of a human, but does not touch the pure soul. Despite all the all of our doings, whether it is mental or physical, the effect is only on the first three levels, the Annamaya Kosha, the Pranamaya Kosha, and the Manomaya Kosha, the food body, the energy body, and the mental uh, body, because in, that is where we suffer the most. Think about it. Our suffering occurs because of what we do, what we think, how we um, internalize everything around us. So let's continue, Sister Sumati. The people of today do not even know that there is a soul within them. They forget that they were born pure. As they grow, they learn from their parents, their teachers, and from that which comes from the outside world. And taking all this into their mind, they cover the layers of the soul, which are the sukshma sharira, the causal body, and the karana sharira, the subtle body, with their karmas. That's that's what Appa saying here. He says most of the people in the current world do not even know there is a soul. They don't know. Didn't do, other than the fact that they have a human body, that their name is so, so and so, and they are a father, mother, or son of or something, and they work here, they do not understand that there is something which is divine within themselves. And it will take a long, long time before they many of them realize that. And then begins the search, then, then begins the seeking, then begins finding the guru, then begins understanding and changing your behavior to go to the level where you finally realize the purpose of life and strive towards it. But the soul, he says, is never corrupt. Soul cannot be touched because it's the highest and purest consciousness. And none of the grosser levels that we subject our human ego or body to can ever adhere to the soul. So he says, we learn from the parents, our teachers, and from what comes from the outside world. And taking all that, we cover our uh, karana sharira, the, the, uh, you know, the sukshma sharira and the karana sharira and all, with all our karmas. So the soul remains un uncorrupt, but we cover all the other koshas with, with all this karma that we uh, create by seeing and learning from what we have around us. So in, at this juncture, we must remember that when a soul is reborn in this world, it chooses the parents. What do we mean when we say it chooses the parents? It, it means that the vibration of the particular soul that is being born connects to the vibration of the, the to uh, you know, um, father and mother who are coming together and chooses them because their levels of thinking, everything is similar. And where the soul can get the most experience to undergo its karma and finish it, that is where it is born. So we may many times wonder why we are born to certain parents. It's because we have chosen that. That we have chosen the environment, the teachers, the people who are all around us. 
and uh, the, this is like you know having a seed that is you know just thrown all over the field when there is correct water and when there is you know uh, uh, sunlight then the seed sprouts like that our karma is within us and in the environment it it starts sprouting when the correct uh, you know uh, in, in things that are needed for the soul to experience that karma come into fruition so what can we do to change that we can change how we behave now we can change what we see and how we react to things now so we can start purifying these things now what has already happened is happened so if you have done wrong in the world it's okay it it has happened you can do nothing about what you have already done but you can learn from it and go forward so that's why also it becomes important not to judge anybody because you don't know what you have done to be born in this particular world i believe me every one of us who are born as i've already already said many times has committed sins or errors transgressed against the cosmic laws that's why we are here that's why we are suffering that's why we are undergoing what we are undergoing but we have the power to change all that now if we start now we can change that and that is the most important lesson in this whole valipadu appa say understand who you are understand that you have a divine soul within you understand that you are divine and find the divinity within you live like the god or the divine being that you are meant to be because when we were created we were supposed to be like that but we created this this world of chaos that we see we created the suffering that we are seeing look at it the climate change what is why is it happening because what we did so the important thing here is to remember that whatever we see and do it's all within our power these are the sense telephones we can close them we can disconnect the sense telephones from what is around us and focus within us and understand and look at everything as a gnani one who follows valipadu starts looking at the world as a gnani because you no longer look at oh this is happening to me so i don't know why it is happening i am suffering you understand oh this is happening to me because i have done something that merited this to happen however as a witness i i can look at it i can change it i can make it better so that future becomes better for me so we start discerning everything we experience and we see and we look then we understand okay if i eat too much this is what's going to happen so let me moderate my food habits and when we say okay when i experience this sense pleasure too much it's going to affect my body let me stop doing that then what do we do we stop looking at things like movies or literature that creates that kind of thoughts then we that aversion to such things starts happening naturally when you realize that you don't no longer want to hear loud too loud music because you understand that extremely loud music can uh, which, which is in even uh, though it's called music in in certain cultures can have a very uh, uh, difficult effect on us you know that vibration can affect us and the more you become purified the more you want to be in harmony with things around you the more you, if you watch what your your feeling or what you desire as you're in the uh, spiritual path you'll realize that if your desire is more for the subtle things more for melodious music more for uh, the nicer things of life when you realize that when you watch something that is violent or gross you do, no longer want to see it then you realize you're actually progressing in your spiritual life because spiritual life is nothing but the life we are living spirituality is a way of life valipadu is a way of life it is not just the part where we sit and meditate it's not just the part where we go to a pilgrimage it is how we live every day day after day moment after moment so we must understand everything that appa is telling us here understand that you are a divine soul look at what you are looking seeing eating thinking look at the people you are associating with say for example there is a person who is a gossip and i had this experience myself and the even though i do not like to gossip with the person i would 
start you know kind of listening to what they were saying and maybe you know just to please the person start talking and then at a particular state when a, the opportunity gave came for me to dissociate myself i was able to dissociate myself completely because i am still not a granny i am still affected by what somebody says so being with that person only created or made me go lower on my vibratory level so i started changing i started withdrawing and it is okay appa says in valipadu it is okay if you want to disassociate yourself or distance yourself from people who have habits that are not conducive to spiritual growth it is important that you don't do it yogananda also says that do not go into a bar because you know you may not have that kind of uh, determination and you may not have developed that much spiritually enough to go there and not remain affected by it because what is the kind of thoughts that is in a bar it's more about the sensual pleasures but the, the grosser things of life and that's going to affect you so be watch what kind of people you associate with and that is one of the biggest lessons we have learned today so we i think we can do a little more and then stop for today go ahead sister samati yeah how does this knowledge that comes from without affect man the one who listens to good experiences the good and performs good for others is known as the good man the one who accepts or invites unnecessary knowledge into himself and experiences bad because of such knowledge and then gives out that bad knowledge to others becomes known as a wicked man whether the behavior so here uh we are going to start with uh, stop with this today because we are running out of time so here what is appa saying what affects man the knowledge that comes from without which is the you know if we listen to good things if we associated with good people then that is satsang it satsang is not just when you people gather together and do meditation or you you do uh, you know sat, uh, what do you say, sing songs and stuff satsang is the company of the good and that can be something that we can choose proactively every day of a life as much as we can if circumstances allow us then we can choose the company of the good because we get the the you know they say when two or three people gather then the there the the divine energy is higher because then all the vibrations of the people are similar they strengthen each other but if say you have one person and there are two people who are good but this one person has very gross energy and comes there and talks uh, negative things it is going to affect you so we must be aware of what we allow within ourselves the people we associate with it is not wrong in the beginning of the spiritual progress to do this consciously without hurting anybody you don't have to be very obvious about it but we can and we should change ourselves so that we can associate with the good and imbibe that good energy that will strengthen each other and if we associate with somebody who is you know who was wicked then we are going to be affected by that so you you know a person who's called wicked is usually a person who's think about the children in school they are all going to school they have no intention of becoming bad then somebody does something wrong then another person sees and uh, looks at it and wants to do it then there is the peer pressure to do that then everybody starts doing that mistake making that mistake they they start committing wrongs a person uh, uh, you know go, is uh, i have seen uh, in my own life so some people you know they, they are very good then they associate with somebody who uh, is a kleptomaniac or steals in stores and they think oh it's okay to do that it is not okay that is why as parents it becomes very important for us to make sure that we tell our children it is not okay to do bad things it becomes very important for us to tell our children good stories to tell them what is good what is bad show them how to discriminate the in the same way we ourselves have to do that with it with ourselves each day if we know that something is bad listen to your intuition it will tell you the soul tells you that is wrong don't do it listen to it because if you don't then you are going to suffer so we still have the rest of the chapter um, and we will continue that uh, from next week